Sex Talk. Hello, and welcome back to the Sex Talk. Today, I want to introduce someone new to last. Hi, my name is Wayne Lassane. Uh, I'm a new coach at uh, last. Uh, I specialize in uh, intimacy, relationship, and sex uh, as a coach around non-monogamy. Okay. So, how and why did you get into this work? Yeah, that's a tough one. Okay, so um, I actually stumbled into uh, a world of swingers uh, early on, uh, probably about 25 years ago with an uh, ex, and we kind of fumbled through it a little bit. But uh, I had been uh, uh, not ethical in my relationships as far as cheating goes. And, and so when I met my current wife, we've been together now almost 20 years, uh, when I went to her, I, I kind of explained to her that I didn't know if I could be in a monogamous relationship. I didn't know what that meant at the time, and so we kind of, uh, kind of decided this is a path that we would go down and try together. And uh, during that time, uh, I don't know if anybody knows, but like 20 years ago, there was no help, there was no resources, so we struggled for the, so we struggled for about 10 years on our own with no help, and we kind of just figured it out on our own. And and through that, through all the the hard times and trials and tribulations and. And, and pain and, and you know that we had to go through and endure but it, to, just to get to a place to where we start to felt calm we decided well, well she decided to go as become a therapist and, and to help people that uh, like us who didn't get the help that we got and so I did, while she was doing it, I was still working in the industry and I decided and during the pandemic we started hosting uh, uh, processing groups and I got to talk to people and I was like wow there's a lot of people out here that really could use help and people that started asking me was I licensed and I st started thinking to myself I was like man I, no I'm not but I would love to help people and so I became and, and I realized there was a passion for me to help people around the issues of non-monogamy and relationships and so I decided to go back to school I joined the uh, last program to become a coach and, and, and everything after that is uh, yeah, in the books <laughs> Everything is history, yeah. 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 I, I agree with you. I'm a huge fan of ethical non-monogamy. You know, the traditional relationships are, people are finding that they're confining. How can we shift that? Mm -hmm. I think that what you're doing is so important and so needed. So, um, so you're a sex and relationship coach specializing in non-monogamy. Yes. Tell us some of the specific issues that you that you enjoy dealing with or that you see right. yeah. commonly? Yes. So I know everybody always knows about jealousy. That's the easy one. That's the one that everyone, oh, you but know. But it's jealousy. not, I think, I think let's tell everybody about, tell us about jealousy. Cause people think that, oh, if I'm ethically non-monogamous, I'm not going to feel jealous. Oh no, you'll definitely feel jealous. You know, that, yeah, that's jealousy is a natural emotion. Normal emotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I think that we all feel in it. And again, you know, uh, it just goes to what I've realized about myself about the jealousy is it depends on where I'm at. If I'm if I'm not feeling my best self, or if I'm feeling uh, like I'm I'm not doing the things I want to do, I tend to that would uh, that tends to make me feel a little lower in my energy and my spirit and my connection with people. So if my partner is now enjoying somebody, then I'm going to feel jealous because I'm not I'm not feeling my best so now I'm thinking that I'm feeling like she's getting something from someone else that I can't give her at that moment so I have to check in with myself at that time so those feelings come up just again it just depends you know where I'm at and a lot of times when those feelings come up I try to figure out okay what's going on with me you know and a lot and I and, and when I can recognize it it's probably maybe it could be from finances or it could be from from stress. stress, work, whatever, yeah. right? And so yeah. once I'm able to figure it out and I can start or to bring it back. from our childhood. Oh, oh my right? gosh, yes, Right, yes, feelings yes. of abandonment from yes. family, yes. being a kid, you know, all that stuff. And so what it, what it actually brings me to is, is one of the things that I kind of would love to help people with is um, I think that when we get together in the beginning of relationships, we're, we're, we're in that uh, <laughs> new relationship energy phase and we tend to overlook a lot of things. Yeah. And so we don't, we don't really address the things that bother us or we know that could bother us because they will bother us later on for sure. And I feel like what ends up happening is that we, we, those things go unattended and later on within the relationship, they become resentful. You know, mm -hmm. they turn to resentment mm -hmm. because we didn't yes. deal with it early on. So I want to help people deal with all the hard and heavy lifting in the beginning yeah. so to, to alleviate some of that work in the back end so they can enjoy the relationship. And I think that when you're 
to do that work in the beginning when you're not in a bad space and you're 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 still good is probably the best time to do it instead of get waiting till you are upset. Wait till you're angry. Yes, and now you're resentful. approaching it in a different way. So I would love to just start to bring up all a lot of hard questions that people aren't thinking about in the beginning of the relationship. Say, hey, so what about this? What do you think about this? And so what if this was to come up? You know, what do you? How do you feel about this? And are you open to these things? So let's deal with these things now. Yeah. So you can already kind of have. You're not going to fully be able to explore them all. Yeah. But Fr you can kinda, front loading. Yes, 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 yes. You can kind of get a feel for them now, and then later on when they come up, you can. Oh, we talked about this. And yeah. So and I think that a lot of that's missed by a lot of people within, within any sort of relationship. May it be monogamous or non-monogamous. Yeah, I just right. think there's a missed aspect of yeah. relationships. So giving people the tools up front at the beginning when they're start, just starting out yes. around jealousy and new relationship yes. energy yes. and making sure that they're dealing with all of these things is something that you that you see a lot and that you Definitely. find. Yeah. Yes. I think so too. I think that like people, it, it, people come to me and they're like, I'm not supposed to be jealous if I'm non-monogamous. And no, actually in non-monogamy, you're going to be jealous. Jealousy is going to come up. Yeah. You so, know. So I, as I said, stated before, I started in the swingers world, right? right? And uh, it's so funny because a, a friend of ours, she came to me one day and she had made a statement and, and it made something because you know it. So swingers world, you know, it's, it's like it's not a lot of emotional connection. It's, it's, it's just it's, a lot of sexual. It's a, it's a sex based uh, 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 practice, right? You know? Right. And uh, so, and uh, so she came to me one day and she was like, "Wow, I was." She said, "You were hanging out with somebody," and, and I was like, "I don't know this feeling. I'm feeling like." But I, she said, I realized I was feeling a little jealous. I said, oh, why is he hanging out with her when he could be hanging out with me? And I said, and when she said it, I hit me. I said, oh, wow, I've been jealous of people that, that I've hung out with. And I'm like, oh, man, why is she hanging out with him? And I was like, wow. And I think that's something that's so not talked about within that industry. I mean, sorry, not industry, but lifestyle. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it's, but, because we all have emotions. No matter what we do, so, emotions are brought so in. So it's not as much talked about if you're in the swinger lifestyle as it is in like polyamory yes, or non-monogamy. Yes, okay, yeah. interesting. Yes, uh -huh. yes, yes, definitely. Oh, and just, cool. You know, and again, and I, and I, for me, like non-monogamy is is all of things under right poly swinging whatever. And I, and I just wish that those two communities could kind of see that they're all working for the same thing. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a lot of overlap. It's so interesting much. though, yes. but I find that a lot of times people get into swinger, they'll go with their partner this is the only time we do this and then maybe it's a one-off it's not like an ongoing yes, it's yeah. occasional maybe yes. yeah and it's yeah and then and, and, and then in, in poly i know that a lot of poly people that i know or groups i've been in they speak about well it's not about sex you know when it's not it's not you know it's about emotions at the same time you see the have events that you know they do you know and i think again it's one that they do have sex at so it's again it's one of these things that aren't isn't spoken about i think about. i know what you're talking about there's definitely i think people forget or miss what poly is about sometimes and then they do have like well they call themselves polyamorous but they're acting like what we call con consider them to be swingers which is mostly sexual and we're like polyamory is more about intimacy and connection yes, but yes. Yeah, I think just general education for everyone yes. is important. Definitely. And, and like you said, it's a lot of overlap. And I just think that it, if people could just kind of learn more about it and get a under, better understanding, they will see that it's a lot of things are, it's, it's not as it's not as scary as they may think it to be. Right. You know, it's, just, right. it's actually, uh, what I feel as though for myself and some of the people that I've learned, when they, when they actually get into it and they kind of see it, it, it feels a little freeing for them. Yeah. Because they get to let go a lot of the, the things that they felt shame and guilt about. Just even in a, just having a thought about somebody, uh -huh. someone can feel shame and guilt. Like, oh man, right. I think this person at work is attractive, and I'm not supposed to be feeling that. But you should be able to have that conversation because it's not. You shouldn't feel guilty about being right. attracted well, to somebody. Right. Well, that's part of our. I I always say this. That's part of this monogamous conditioning that we have. And so everybody's taught like, well, I can't say that to my partner. Yes. If I tell my partner somebody else is attractive they're gonna get hurt yes. or they're gonna get upset and they're gonna get jealous and I have to protect I can't let our relationship be damaged by my partner getting jealous or me getting jealous so it sucks because we feel alone and I, and I think that more people I've talked yeah. to so many people who are not they're regular everyday regular people they're monogamous people but once you, I have a conversation with them I start to learn that so many people are open to so many things yeah and they just didn't know it because they had never had the 
language or they never heard it. And I think that if, if people, again, if people just had the education behind it, mm -hmm. I don't and know. And the support yes, and the role models. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think that people would choose different dynamics within relationships. I think that we feel like we only have one choice. Yeah. And, and when we come, when, you, when we get into that relationship, it has to look like this. Yep. And it's, it could be so many different things. And that's so what I want to show. Like, like yeah. you can, it can, a relationship could be anything you want it to be. You can have whatever you want. Yes. <laughs> anything. If you can, if you can think it, we can create we can it. Have it. Yes, yeah. yes. I'm, I believe that same thing. Yes. So, uh, a couple more questions. What is some advice you would give somebody, somebody new that mm -hmm. is interested in trying out non-monogamy? Uh, check your ego. Okay. Yeah, yeah, check your ego because I think your ego tends to get you into trouble because you start to compare yourself to other people and you start and, and you're we're never going to live up to what we have in our head. That we have about an idea about we have about someone else, mm -hmm. and so if we can just check our ego and just be like, okay, it's time for me to humble myself and come in and just be open and be a student of, of the things that I can receive of and life. learn. Yeah, a student of yes. life, yes. right? Yes. Relationships yes. in life because there's so much to learn. Now we we that we we don't know a lot about relationships. I think that once we open ourselves up and we start to talk to people who have. It's amazing some of the people I've met. I've met some of the most amazing people just going to healing circles or going to circles to where people just talk about, uh, uh, they're so vulnerable, just, just talk about their emotions and their feelings. It's so amazing to me. It's like, oh wow, I walk away, I was like, wish everybody can get this. Like, this is, this is amazing. Like, man, hey, everybody, come on. Uh -huh. Hence me starting a, a men's group because I've been in these circles. I was like, you guys, I can create, we can create this. Can it's it's this. over here. Yeah. Like, like you, it's so helpful. I see them going through this. It's amazing. I want to bring this to here to, to, for you guys because I just feel like, again, going back to what saying, it's just, for me, it's like, like, open yourselves up. Yeah. You know. And, 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 Check your ego. Yes, yes. I told this to a client once and he loved it um, because I think he was getting a lot of flack for being a straight guy in the polyamorous world. And I said, look, as a polyamorous guy, you're automatically a feminist because you're allowing your woman, your female partner, to also be non-monogamous. And he was like, thank you. <laughs> and so, yeah, so he was an example of some guy that had his ego in check. Yes, but yeah, I think yes. that a lot of guys yeah. would struggle with I, that. I struggle with it. You know, I've struggled with it. I still, it comes up sometimes with me. And it's, it's because, like, again, I've been conditioned for so long and I've, mm -hmm. for, for the majority of my life, I've been monogamous. Well. I was taught, in to be, taught to taught be monogamous, to be monogamous. Yeah. and it's so hard to let some of those things go because they're challenging and it's scary and, and, it's, and you worry about loss and you're, you're afraid of, uh, of, of, of of how you look to others like those are things that those Judgment, are challenges come up for criticism, me criticism shaming yes yeah. yes all that and so I still deal with something and so yeah. and again I just have to look within myself and I say okay what's going on with me yeah like, like why am I feeling like this and I and I realize that I do at some point, at, at some point, I did care about what people, my perception, my public perception was, and mm -hmm. how people viewed me, and, and which it didn't allow me my, for my partner to enjoy certain aspects of, of the non-monogamous lifestyle that we live mm -hmm. the way I was enjoying it because it was it was scary to me, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and 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 I think that with support, uh, just having people around you who who think the same way as you and, and and open to things it makes you feel like oh, okay cool I can do this yeah but when you're around people who who aren't in that mindset yeah. and you start to retreat and you start to be like yeah I don't know why why would I think community that I, that was okay is everything it's everything yeah. yes yeah. and I want to build community yeah so this group sounds great so this is my last question yes. tell us about this men's group yes. that you're starting okay so as I said I've been to many circles you know where I've enjoyed uh, uh, the time that I spent with around these men being vulnerable and I think that us as men it's so hard for us to be vulnerable. We're taught from a child that, you know, about feelings, emotions, like boys don't cry, you know, be tough. And I think that that has hindered men in a lot of ways. Well, I will speak for myself. It's hindered me because it's, it's not allowed me to be um, emotionally available around certain aspects of my life with certain people. And, and I just I understand the power now in being vulnerable. It's amazing. It's so free. Oh, my gosh. Like, like to, so to, to allow somebody to 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 know what you think and you feel mm -hmm. and in and, that and, and, and granted yes some people will weaponize it against you but that's why you want to meet people and, and a lot and, and be with people who, who won't do that Throw to you. Your community. yes and then because within that relationship in itself is going to be so special because now 
I can trust your intentions, you can trust my intentions, you can trust my words, I can trust your words, and it's so amazing. Yeah. And it's so hard to find, like, like it's so hard to find. So if I can create a space where men can come and just be vulnerable and speak their truths about, you know, some of the ideas or, or thoughts they've had around themselves and, and their relationship, and, and if I can help them gain any clarity at all, right, or, or just have them, allow them a space to speak it out loud without feeling judged or shamed, man, please come. I yeah. want every man to join this group, especially if you've ever thought about non-monogamy, go to Wayne's group. When is it? It's virtual. So yes, it's going to be every other Tuesday. Every other uh, Tuesday. Starting this Tuesday. Uh, well. Starting to, this Tuesday is June, yes. Tuesday, June 21st, yes. 2022. Yeah, 7 p.m. Pacific 7 time. 7 p.m. Pacific, okay. Yes, it's going to be virtual. I have a link. Yes. So what's your Instagram? Uh, it's my name. I'm the only one on there. W A Y N E Wayne Lassane L E S A N E. Also Facebook. Um, I have a Twitter account. Yeah. Everybody, Wayne Lassane, um, sex and relationship coach, focusing and specializing in non monogamy. Yes. And he has a non monogamy group for men that's virtual. Thank you so Please much. Please come. Yes. Oh, no. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank All you. All right. <laughs> Thanks. That was a sex talk. And. Hi, my name is Wayne Lassane. Uh, you can reach me at my IG under my name, Wayne Lassane, W-A-Y-N-E-L-E-S-A-N-E. -E -E. My Facebook is under the same name. My Twitter is under the same name. Uh, I'm a relationships, uh, intimacy, uh, sex uh, coach. I specialize in non-monogamy. Please come check me out. I, I hope to see you guys there soon.